Welcome to part 5 of our series on how to get a full score on the AP Computer Science Principles exam. My name is Om Desai, and today I'm going to be showing you my Create Task submission for the exam. There are three parts to the Create Task. The video, which shows your program running. The written response, which shows how your program was made and how your program works. And the program code itself. So I'm going to start by showing you my video submission, but before that, let me give you some background on my program. So for context, I'm also a student of robotics. And so in 2015, my dad helped me build a Arduino-based robot, and it was programmed, and it could be programmed using the C programming language. And since then, I've been learning the C programming language, and I've been experimenting with that robot. So when, they, when it was time for me to prepare for the APCSP exam, I was working on a new program for that robot in C. And I realized that the program I was making would have worked with all the requirements specified for the create task. It would have met every requirement. So I decided to use it. And that's why this program is more complicated than a lot of other programs you might see. And that's because it's not only for the APCSP exam, it's also meant to do a lot of other things. For example, this program has a form of artificial intelligence. So when it's downloaded onto the robot, it uses sensor data from the robot's sensors to help the robot navigate its way through an unknown maze. And this will be clearer, clearer when you see the robot in action in the video, so let me play the video. When I turn on the robot, the first thing it asks me for is the speed. Button C decreases it, and button A increases it. Button B sets the speed. It next asks me whether I want it to follow the left wall or the right wall. Button A makes left wall, and button C makes right wall. Now it started running, you can see the numbers at the top, so what speed the wheels are going at, and numbers at the bottom, so the sensor values. Now if we put a paper in front, we can see that the front sensor is sensing something, and that the robot is turning away. Now let's see the robot in action. Starting the robot now, it's using the proportional derivative algorithm that I wrote using C programming, and it's following the left wall. It tries to turn towards the wall, and if it gets too close, it turns away. Now you can see it turning on dime, when, and it does that whenever it reaches a dead end. Now that you've seen my video, and that you've seen my robot use artificial intelligence to make it through the maze, here is the code that the robot used to do that. Now I'm not going to go through this code line by line, I'm more going to go through how you submit the code, and how you format the code for submission. And so this, there's no template for this, but it does have to be submitted as a PDF. So what I did was I copied and pasted the code into a Word document, which I then converted into a PDF. So the first thing you'll notice on the top is that I mark off what programming language I used, C programming. And you'll remember that I also d marked this during the video. I mentioned this during the video. And that's because it's very important. The graders for the create task need to know what programming language you're using. So it's important that I put the C programming language in both the video and in the actual program. I also wrote what algorithm it used and what its purpose was, but these aren't as important. Next thing you'll notice is this part, and not every function you use in your program has to be your own. You can use libraries from outside sources if you give a correct credit to them. So for example, for this, I'm giving credit to Pololu Robotics, because they're using, they created the libraries which I'm using for to access to sensors in the robots. Another thing you'll notice is that it's, there's a lot of comments. So I make a lot of comments to make reading the thing, reading the program intuitive and to make it easier to understand what everything in the program does. So 
so adding the comments just makes the grader's life easier. I also formatted it, so I've put indents everywhere it needs to be indented, I've put spaces next to functions, so it's very easy to read, and it doesn't strain your eyes to read it. And you'll also notice that my main function has just, it just has a while loop, and it has four functions, and that's how it is with a lot of the stuff in here, so it's just little functions, so I don't write anything big, it just keeps it from getting too cluttered, so my, the program is very clean and uncluttered. And so as you can see, there's a lot of different functions, and I'm putting these functions into functions, and other functions, to make sure that isn't uncluttered. So, there are two parts that you want to specifically mark off in your program. So one part, you want to mark off with an oval. And the part that you mark off with the oval is a place where you put an algorithm inside an algorithm and your mathematical concepts. So, in my case, I have the algorithm for driving the robot up here, and then I use many different mathematical algorithms inside it. And so I mark this off with an oval, so that graders know which part of the code to look at and judge for algorithms inside algorithms and mathematical principles. One thing is that I've hidden this area of code just for this video, because there are some values in here that I derived that I don't want everybody to see. So when I submitted my code, there wasn't anything hidden, and there shouldn't be anything hidden when you submit your code. The graders should be able to see everything there. Now if we head down a bit more, you can see a rectangle, and now the rectangle is there to mark off an abstraction. And so my, in my case, these two functions are abstractions, because I call them many different times throughout, throughout the program, and if I, didn't ha if I didn't have these functions, then I'd have to write out all this code several different times, and this would make the program very cluttered, and it would make it harder to debug the program. Now let's move on to the written response. Now, let's start running through the written responses and matching them to the rubric. So the rubric has the same basic format as the explore task rubric. So we have the scoring criteria, the decision rules, and the scoring notes. And all of them are have the same things as the explore task rubric. So let's get started going through each part of the written task and matching that to the scoring criteria. So the first task is 2A. So the first response is 2A. And the goal of this is that the video should demonstrate the running of at least one feature. And if you remember from the video, it did demonstrate the robot. It did demonstrate me pressing the buttons on the robot and it's showing different things. Showing at least one feature running. And so the response audio narration should also identify the purpose of the program. So if you remember from the video, the audio narration does identify the purpose of the program. And my response for 2A also identifies the purpose of the program, saying that the purpose of the program is to build an intelligent robot to solve unknown mazes. So including this purpose in the response, the audio narration and the written response gets me a point. To get to the point, you don't have to include it in both the audio narration and written response. I just again include it bo in both, just to be safe. The next category is row 2, which is for response 2b. So let's go down to response 2b. And so the first segment of row 2 is that it's a describe or outline steps used in the incremental or iterative development process. Now, all this really means is that it should describe steps saying an iterative development process is going in a cycle. So it would involve you creating a program, then, then looking at this program, fixing problems, making your logic better, and then iterating through the program again. 
And so you can keep doing that, and that would be a method of iterative development. So in my case, I mentioned how I used an incremental and iterative process until I found the right balance by testing with different values. And as this says, this would be testing and refining and improvements is a part of iterative development. So I would get a point for row two. The next row, row three, also has to do with response to B. And it involves identifying at least two difficulties in developing the program, so two problems I encountered, and how each problem was resolved. So going back to the written response, I noted that the first problem I encountered was that the sensors would show the same value, and then I noted that I resolved this by storing maximum and minimum sensor values. I also noted that another issue I encountered was that I had to decide how prominent I had to make the values, and so I solved this by testing and refining. So, the, I identified two problems and identified how I solved them right after. So by identifying this, I'd get a point for row three. The next part is row four. And row four is for response 2C. And so response 2C is a code segment and then some responses about this code segment. And so this code segment I'm using for competitive purposes also. So I'm hiding some of the numbers because, of course. And so these, this isn't anything important. I'm just setting some values and I'm just setting some values and subtracting some things. But so, but I didn't want to include it because I, because since I'm using it for competitive purposes, I didn't want to show you the values. So you don't have to hide this and there's, there's nothing that's important to the rubric in there. And so row 2C for row 4 wants to select a code submit to implement an algorithm. So for example, here's an algorithm. If the front proximity, that's how close it is to the front, is greater than distance, it's a beep and then turn in place. So that's one algorithm that's used. Then row 5 is for response 2C. And so this for the actual response, and it should explain how it implements an algorithm that uses mathematical or logical concepts. It should explain how the algorithm works and describe what that algorithm does. So in this case, I noted how it uses mathematical concepts here and also here by noting how the mathematical and logical concepts are used and in giving examples. Then I also noted what the algorithm does by saying what the algorithm is responsible for doing and how it uses these values. And I also note how it functions by talking about how it uses these values and how it plugs these values into equations and decides speed. The next row, row 6, is also for response 2C. And so this should explain how it implements an algorithm that includes at least two or more algorithms, it should use mathematical or logical concepts, and explains how one of the algorithms functions independently. So I note how this algorithm, this one, integrates algorithms like these two, so that would fulfill the criteria of one algorithm, including two different algorithms. I also explain how each algorithm functions independently, so talk about how it plugs values into an equation and decides the speed of the left and right wheel. And then I also talk about how one of these algorithms uses mathematical and logical concepts. So I note it here, and then give examples here. So by including all these parts, I earn a point for row 6. The next part is row 7, and that's for response 2D. Now response 2D also has a code segment in it, so I have to include a code segment, 
and did write a response about how about how this code segment works and some questions about the code segment. And so the first row has to deal with the code segment. And the selected code segment is a student developed abstraction. Now I'm not going to go too in detail to abstractions, but for one example, using a function would be considered an abstraction because it isolates the user from the complexity of the program. So just so in this case, the function here would be considered an abstraction. And so a function is just something that it's you define a procedure and then you can use that procedure later on. So in this code segment, I define two procedures, both of which are used later on. So this would be an example of abstraction, and I did a point for row seven for applying abstractions. Row eight is for the actual response. And this means that a response would explain how the abstraction manages complexity. So how I note it here is that I note what the abstraction does, and I also note how it ma helps manage the complexity here and give two reasons why it manages the complexity. So this is a lot like the explore task. So you just have to make sure that your program and your responses fulfill all of these criteria. And if they do, it should be fairly easy to get a full score in this task. There are three points that I want to bring up about this task. So the first point is that this whole thing is in a template, and you can find that template on the Dizzle portfolio on the College Board website. And so I showed you that template on Dizzle portfolio in part three, if you remember. And so the template has boxes. And so you can just copy and paste your answer into the boxes. And for the code segments, you can just take an image of your code. You can take a screenshot or snapshot or such, and then paste it into, paste it into the box they provide for your code. And once you've done that, you can convert it all into a PDF so that you can submit it. The second point I want to bring up is that for this video, I hid this code because I don't want everybody to see the numbers. But when I actually submitted my program, I did not hide this code. So there wasn't a box here. And you shouldn't, when you're doing your program, you shouldn't hide any code either. All the code there should be visible to the graders. Nothing should be hidden. The third point I want to bring up is that your program or create task doesn't have to be as complicated as this. In fact, my thing is more complicated than most of the programs submitted for the create task. You can get a full score as long as it follows all the parts of the rubric. For example, the example I made in part three about the program that counts even in odd numbers as long as that follows all the parts in the rubric, that would have gotten a full score. That's all for the create task, and so we're wrapping up part five. So next part in part six, I'm going to show you how I prepared for the written exam, and I'm going to show you some of the material that I used to study for it. I'm also going to give you links and references to some materials that will help you prepare. Most of them are free, but some of them cost a little money. So thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel so you're notified when new parts of this series come out, and when more informative videos from our channel come out. See you in part 6.